All right, yeah. Beautiful. All right, the ending is typical of any championship basketball game. The game ball is flung high into the air. Players swarm onto the court to embrace those already there. Hugs, dances, and joy. But this wasn't quite so typical, for this team was not the one that was supposed to be celebrating. This team was supposed to be watching from the sidelines, long ago eliminated from playoff contention. The 1987 Nova Scotia Canada Games men's basketball team was a group of all-stars, all from universities, save for one high school player. What we tried to do was pick a cohesive mix of kids who brought a range of, of skills and, and, and talents to the mix. Um, not by design, but, but interestingly enough, we had kids from pretty much all over the province. We had a number of kids from Cape Breton, uh, which in men's basketball is probably fairly rare in, you know, historically for the province that we would have as many kids from Cape Breton as we did. Um, and it was a really, I think it was a very representative team of Nova Scotia. Um, we had a number of African Nova Scotian kids. We had a number of kids from small towns. Um, so it was, it was a great mix in that regard. But really, we just put together, we took the best kids, uh, the best mix of kids we could find um, based on who we had available to us. They were underdogs as the tournament began that February night at Breton Education Center in New Waterford. Fans filled the place, proud to be cheering on their home province heroes, but also fully expecting Ontario, B.C. and Quebec to dominate the play. Nova Scotia was always pretty competitive relative to the talent base we had. And the main thing about that talent base is we virtually never had real size. And indeed, in the Canada Games team, we were probably still one of the smaller teams in the tournament. However, the fans would be surprised and rewarded. The Nova Scotians were overwhelming in every game they played, winning four straight in the round-robin portion, including an 88-76 win over Ontario. They whipped BC by 30 in the semifinal and handled Quebec 91-76 in the final. They won Nova Scotia's first ever team gold medal in Canada Winter Games competition that started 20 years before in Quebec City. They fooled a lot of people because they played as a team, had offensive and defensive balance, and stuck to Coach Bev Greenlaw's game plan that, with a few set plays, was, as one player later said, go out there and have a good time. Quote, we even considered ourselves underdogs. Starting forward Grant McDonald laughs today as he reflects on the team's success. A third-year player with Acadia University at the time, Dartmouth's McDonald thought the Ontario game was the one that pushed them over the top, that gave them the confidence and the vision that they could really win it all. The big guns in this country are always going to be Ontario, BC, and Quebec. No question. So we beat those three teams in succession. And I think the Ontario game was a real test of our mettle. They were very good. Um, and we pulled out, you know, we pulled out a real good game against them. And I think it might have been at that point in time that maybe, I could never say that I never thought we weren't going to win, though. I honestly believe that we thought, as a unit, we were going to make some noise and, and play well. But you did, you know, we took each game at a time, so we weren't thinking about the medal game in game one. I'd say the Ontario game, which put us in the crossover against BC, was probably a pivotal game in terms of the confidence going from here, probably up a couple of notches. Jason Wilson, a guard from Acadia via Halifax, said, Personally, I felt we could win from the start. We'd all played individually on various Nova Scotia provincial teams against many of these players and against better teams. We knew who we were going to play, so that made it easier to plan. He had been part of Greenlaw's Halifax Community YMCA program from the time he could first dribble a ball. Again, Jason Wilson says, all I could think as those final seconds ticked away was of Bev and the honor it was to play for him on this team. I had and have a lot of respect for him. I was happy for the team too, of course. Bev had really brought us together, a group of role players that played as a unit. The tournament started comfortably for the home team. They whomped Newfoundland, 96-75 with Halifax's Augie Jones, then at St. Evex, scoring 17 points, and Mahone Bay's Kevin Vino, then at Acadia, 16. Manitoba fell 87-46 as Halifax's Wade Smith at St. Evex collected 23 points and Jones 15. In their third game, the Nova Scotians blasted PEI 116-49. Every player on the team scored at least four points, with Keith Donovan of Glace Bay and the University of King's College contributing 20. 
Then came Ontario, and the locals rushed to a 39-35 halftime lead. With Wilson scoring 17 and Vino 16, Nova Scotia controlled the second half and won by a dozen. The next test was British Columbia, one of the pre-tournament favorites. Not so. Our guys ran wild, beating the West Coast team 116-86, to a 30-point pasting. Grant McDonald says Quebec was still the favorite going into the final. They had gone through their side of the round robin pretty easily, too. The hometown crowd made its impact. Cheering from long before the opening tap, they kept the players energized. Nova Scotia ran to a quick 11-point lead, but at the half, the margin was 3, 38-35. For the first eight minutes of the second half, the teams traded baskets. Then Nova Scotia pulled away and comfortably eased to the final 91-76 victory. You consider the game to have been won is when you hear that final buzzer, <laughs> at which point I turned to Mark and shook his hand and said, yeah, pretty good, huh? The raising of the flag for Nova Scotia when it's never been done before, uh, and once again, you know, thinking about it now, it hasn't been done since. Um, you, there's, a, there's a pride that comes along with it that, you know, is very, very difficult to escape because you don't understand, as I don't think young people, 20 years of age, you don't really even, uh, you haven't understood what you've done. You haven't understood for the people that have come before you and watched and, and, and been involved with you know, maybe a certain level of frustration in terms of being successful. It, it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen very often. And the more we, I think about it coming into the Hall of Fame night, and it has been done since, it begins to take on a certain amount of magnitude for the province. And, and, and it, it gives you a lot of pride. You can coach and you can motivate and you can do all you want. It's always dependent on the players. And it's always dependent on the person, uh, hood, and the character of the, of the individual people that make up a team. You can't have a very successful team without having great leadership within that team. And great leadership obviously always has to come from either one or more of the individual kids in the team. This team was just a wonderful collection of a number of kids who were great leaders and a number of kids who were smart enough to be very good followers and to be happy to be together. 